So uh, we're going to start with this neural models session. The first paper is uh, a Bayesian neural model for documents relevant estimation by Alberto Purpo and Gian Antonio Susto. Alberto is presenting. So I think you can come up here. And I'll give you the floor. Thank you. Try to be as concise as possible. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, have my time here. All right. Thank you. Hello, everyone here and online. I'm Alberto. Thank you for the introduction. And yeah, I'm really happy to be here in presence and to present uh, this work I did uh, entitled A Bayesian Model for Documents Relevance Estimation with uh, my PhD school supervisor, Professor John Antonius, who's also from here, from Padua. Let's get started. If I can change to the click, click. OK. Uh, yeah, great. So in general, as a broad definition, a, an IR system, a search engine, is a solution to rank to retrieve and rank documents and uh, order them in decreasing order of relevance from the most doc most uh, most relevant documents at the top and the less relevant ones following them. Um, however, if you look at the top 10, 20 results from most of the search engines, the most popular search engines, you often notice that especially for certain queries, uh, you don't always see the most relevant documents at the top and uh, less relevant documents at the bottom, but you often see a mix. And you see a different proportion of relevant and not relevant documents mixed together on the same results list. And this is, of course, a suboptimal situation. So from this context, uh, we decided to ask ourselves the, the following question. So we thought, what if we could estimate the, uh, the, the actual proportion of relevant to not relevant documents in the top K positions of a ranked list? Could this help us to improve the overall quality of a, of a search engine? And the answer we gave ourselves was yes. Uh, and we thought at least of a couple of examples where this could be useful. You probably uh, might think of many other more, I'm sure. Uh, the first situation we, where we thought uh, this could be, uh, could be useful was to merge different rank lists uh, computed by different workers of a distributed IR system. Most large scale IR systems often work like with a, with a distributed index. Think about Elasticsearch shards or whoever is familiar with that. Uh, so you have different workers, they all perform retrieval on different subsets uh, of, a, of an index and of a large collection, and then they all produce a results list that is then to merge together to produce a final results list that a user sees. If we could estimate uh, the proportion of relevant documents that each of these uh, ranked lists uh, contains, then we'd be able to merge them in a better way and present in the end uh, a better final results list to the users of our search engine. Uh, another situation that we thought uh, could benefit from uh, such a system uh, would be like uh, an IR model that relies on an ensemble of other models. So in this case, we don't have the same retrieval model running in parallel uh, through different workers. But in this case, we have different retrieval models uh, that all perform retrieval on the same collection. And we are trying to, in this case, we would estimate the proportion of relevant documents that each retrieval model is able to collect for a certain user query. Certain retrieval models might be better than others for certain user queries. And so we thought, hey, if we could estimate uh, the proportion of relevant documents, which is the best IR model that uh, works for this query and uh, produces the highest number, uh, highest proportion of relevant, not relevant documents, then we could improve uh, by a lot the quality of our uh, ranking model of our overall IR pipeline. And um, so we decided to, and this is also the, the actual situation of uh, rank fusion models. Uh, where in that in the literature was framed that we, we can find a lot of approaches uh, there. So we decided to formalize this problem and to focus on the rank fusion uh, situation, even if maybe some of you might have thought also about um, query performance prediction, which is also a related uh, aspect to this. But it, we decided to frame this problem as a rank fusion problem. So we came up with two research questions uh, that we aim to answer in this uh, presentation and in our paper. So we first asked ourselves, is it possible to estimate the proportion of relevant to not relevant documents in a ranked list? Uh, how can we do it? Second question, can we use this information once we computed it to improve the actual overall quality of our rank fusion system in this case? And of course, uh, we wrote the paper, so the answer is yes to both of these questions. So what we propose uh, is a two stages approach. First, we propose a, uh, to train a machine learning model to estimate this quantity uh, only given the uh, relevant scores returned by each of the um, 
uh, rank it uh, re returned by each of the retrieval models running and uh, on, on our in our system and associated to each document in the rank list that we aim to merge. So we only take these uh, relevant scores associated to documents and we estimate how many of these documents are relevant in the ranked list. Once we train this model, we just adopt a simple rank fusion approach to put together these models, taking uh, making good use of this additional information. And uh, let's see how we did it. So first, uh, regarding the machine learning model we trained, we uh, propose a quantification learning model. I decided to dedicate a couple of slides to this background because I'm going to talk about a few modeling strategies which you don't often see uh, in IR, maybe in particular. So maybe it could be interesting to, to you know, start a discussion afterwards. So the machine learning model that we propose is a quantification learning model. And quantification learning models are this relatively new um, class of machine learning models that aim at quantifying certain characteristics or properties of a, of a collection of data. Say, for example, you have a collection of customer reviews regarding a certain product that you're selling, and you're interested in knowing what's the proportion overall of positive reviews uh, for this specific product. Then uh, instead of building a classifier that classifies each instance in the data set, you can do better and you can uh, use a quantification train and uh, use a quantification learning model that can help you estimate this uh, broader quantity uh, with more accuracy than uh, doing something like classifying each review individually. So that's what we propose, and uh, I'll, I'll show the details of this approach in the following slides. And uh, that was exactly what that's exactly what we use to estimate the proportion of relevant documents in this ranked list, starting from the distribution of relevant scores associated to uh, the documents contained in it. Uh, the second uh, interesting uh, modeling strategy that we employ in our work is um, Bayesian neural models. So these are. <clears throat> again, like a relatively re recent type of uh, neural networks that differ from traditional ones in one key aspect. Uh, very simple to explain that that causes lots of issues whenever you have to train them, makes things a bit uh, more complicated. So basically these Bayesian neural models for whoever is not familiar with them, it's a, uh, it, it, a Bayesian neural model is very similar to a traditional one. However, in this case, you're not training a neural network weights associated to each neuron. So each neuron in this network doesn't have a real valued weight associated to it, but it has a distribution. So you're learning the distribution of weights that the values that the weights of the of each neuron can uh, take. And so basically, like it's uh, more or less depicted here, uh, for each neuron, you learn the, you learn the parameters that uh, identify the distribution that you decide to associate to uh, each weight. Uh, this is called a prior. <clears throat> And in this case, for example, you can have a Gaussian prior associated to the weight of each neuron. In this case, you learn instead of one real value in traditional neural networks, you have the you learn the mean and variance, basically. Uh, so two parameters, just a minimal increase. Well, you double the number of parameters you're learning, but you're learning a distribution. So uh, actually, you're gaining a lot more uh, with just this uh, small increase in parameters. Any of these neural these Bayesian neural models have a number of advantages. Uh, they are very uh, robust to overfitting compared to traditional neural networks. Uh, for this reason, they require less training data. And all this robustness is uh, basically given by the, the fact that we are learning distributions. So during training and during inference with these neural networks, you will sample a value for each of the weights of the neurons in the model, and you'll compute one output. You repeat this process, and you can put a distribution of the output values. And that, and then the, the aggregation of these output values that you sample uh, will be in the end your final output of the network. And so basically this uh, process of the of training and uh, computing inference with the model is uh, making the model more robust to overfitting in a similar way sort of it's being compared in the literature to uh, some techniques like noise injections that change the input value a little bit and to, to, to have a more robust output and avoid overfitting. Uh, it's also been proven in theory that they can be equivalent to an ensemble of neural networks. Uh, think, for example, since you're learning weight distributions for each weight of each neuron in the neural network, then you can have you can easily build an ensemble of traditional neural networks uh, where each model uh, is a result of a sampling uh, action from the weight distributions of the Bayesian neural networks. So, if all of these models from this ensemble um, have weights sampled from the distributions that we learned, then you you can easily uh, have an intuition of the equivalence, which has been proven in theory, like in a more precise way than uh, I, what, just, what I just described. 
And uh, finally, the last very interesting characteristics of this characteristic of these models is that they can also provide a sort of confident a proxy at least of the confidence of the model for each of the predictions that they compute. Uh, we didn't use in particular this aspect of these models in our work, but I thought it might have been interesting to, to, to mention it to you. So basically, since you compute a distribution of outputs for these models, then you have a distribution with a certain mean and variance. Basically, the mean would be what you take usually to as, a, as the final output score uh, of these models, but the variance can be used in, in, as an interpretation of a confidence of the model. Basically, if the variance is, if the variance is very large, so for the same input, you have a distribution of outputs which varies a lot, then the model is not really confident of what it's predicting. So you can, maybe you, you shouldn't trust its prediction a lot. But uh, well, on the other hand, if the variance is very small, then you can trust it more, uh, or at least the model trusts itself more. And, uh, and so you can, uh, you can trust the results with more confidence. Um, yeah, we employed these uh, modeling strategies to actually build an hybrid, a hybrid uh, neural network, uh, two layer feed forward model for, again, for the estimation of the proportional relevant items in a ranked list uh, that has one first traditional input, uh, traditional uh, feed forward layer. And then the output layer of our model that we propose is this uh, Bayesian neural network. We did it to, to simplify and re further reduce the number of parameters of the model. Uh, we trained this model on a loss function that we developed as well for the quantification learning task. Uh, which is based on the KL divergence. Uh, basically, we try to train the model to, well, we actually train the model um, uh, to estimate the likelihood, the probability of sampling a, a relevant document from a ranked list, which is again, like can be interpreted as the proportion of relevant items in, in it. And, uh, and so we compare basically the two binomial distributions associated to uh, this uh, quantity and, um, yeah, and train the model. If you have more questions, I have um, an extra slide on this loss function. We can talk about it later. Um, great. And so this is the model that we use. And this is the rank fusion pipeline where we employ it to evaluate the whole uh, thing, basically the whole approach. And later I'll talk about the rank fusion uh, technique we employ. So basically our pipeline is quite simple, like very similar to other rank fusion pipelines. We have a collection of documents, a user query, we compute uh, the answer, the results list for each user query uh, using different uh, retrieval models. For each retrieval model, we take the ranked list and the, um, and the relevant scores associated to each document that these uh, models retrieve. We only focus on the top 10 or 20, actually 20 uh, items of each of these ranked lists. And we feed the distribution of relevance scores uh, to our Bayesian quantification learning model. This models gives us the, uh, an indication of the proportion of relevant items in that ranked list. And we use this information combined with all of the other um, values we estimated for the ranked lists produced with, uh, by, by all of the other retrieval models we use. We use these informations in our rank fusion algorithm, which merges together all of the ranked lists from all of these models and uh, helps us compute this, uh, the output rank list that then we evaluate. And we compare this pipeline to other rank fusion approaches in, uh, in our evaluation uh, result of the results section of our paper. The rank fusion algorithm we employ is uh, actually a simple, uh, relatively simple uh, variation of the um, ComSum algorithm. You, anyone who worked on rank fusion probably already heard about the ComSum algorithm. Uh, it's basically, uh, it works by summing all of the relevant scores of documents obtained uh, by different retrieval models. So whenever you the same document is retrieved by multiple retrieval models, the final relevance scores of this document is the results of the sum of its relevance scores computed by all of the other models. Uh, that's very simple. We propose to just rescale these relevance scores with the quantity that we estimated with our rank fusion algorithm, with our uh, quantification learning model. And so, and then we perform basically rank fusion and we compute the new rank lists associated to uh, each user query. Uh, we also experiment with different uh, variation of this rank fusion algorithm, trying, try, for example, to uh, improve the comp MNZ uh, algorithm, which is another very popular uh, rank fusion baseline. Um, we tried with other machine learning models. In the end, we didn't really see uh, some sizable differences, so we decided to go with the simplest option. And uh, since the focus was more on the quantification learning model, we we're fine with it. Um, Again, as I mentioned, in our evaluation, we compared our rank fusion pipeline 
to other uh, rank fusion approaches. We evaluated the, the model on three different collections, which are popularly commonly used in, uh, by the rank fusion community and compared, yeah, this approach to this ComSum, ComMNZ and Meta, which is another probabilistic rank fusion algorithm and to a fully deterministic variation of our uh, model. Here's a table of our results and on like on the performance of our rank fusion algorithm of three collections, rank three, five, and CLAIR 2018. As we can see, compared to the base lengths, the QL fusion proposed approach achieves almost always the, the best performance, sometimes with a more sizable margin than um, uh, in other cases. For, for example, the, most of the performance improvements are reservable with the um, performance measures with a cutoff at five, like and for the precision in particular. Uh, but yeah, again, we see overall, we were pretty happy with the results. We saw that it outperformed more or less all of the other base lengths on, all, on almost all of the collections and uh, performance uh, measures. It's also interesting to observe, uh, we also reported as the last line of each uh, block associated to each collection, the performance of the QL fusion pipeline with a fully deterministic uh, quantification learning model. So we can actually observe the, the actual contribution of a, of a Bayesian uh, neural model, uh, neural layer. And we see that indeed in certain cases in particular, it really, uh, the, the addition of this probabilistic modeling strategy really uh, improved the, uh, improves the performance of our overall pipeline. Um, so yeah, if you, if you haven't heard uh, before of Bayesian neural models, I strongly, like, strongly recommend you to, to have a look at them at least. Um, and yeah, basically I decided to keep it short, leave space for you know questions, anything, if you have any questions on the quantification learning or the loss functions we employed. Um, so in general, overall, we propose this quantification learning approach to estimate the um, proportional relevant to not relevant documents in a ranked list. Our input is only the distribution of relevant scores uh, associated by a certain retrieval model to a set of documents. We consider 10, 20 documents at a time. Then we employed this information in a rank fusion algorithm and we evaluated this uh, rank fusion pipeline I showed you earlier and compared it to other rank fusion approaches and achieved um, satisfying performance uh, according to our yeah, standards. So yeah, thank you for your attention. I'll be very happy to yeah, talk more about this and to answer any of, quest of your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the floor or online? I, can see. I saw some yes, questions. Can, I, can you, could you read the, the questions before? Uh, yeah, I saw that David S raised the okay, so hand. Yeah, stop. Yeah. You can, I stop sharing. Maybe I'll, yeah. or Hello. Maybe I'll, I'll go. Okay. Okay. Uh, can folks hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm curious with the rank fusion algorithm. Um, I'm curious a little bit about the behavior. Did you see it pulling like uh, according from the, you know, according to the proportion, the top X documents from that 20 list? Or did you see it select from lower down? Or uh, did, did you get any sort of idea of how it would choose between elements of the individual ranked lists? Yeah, it was it was very interesting to to have a look at these things because sometimes I mean, it's very frequent that you see certain queries perform better than others. We only focused on uh, the top twenty items, so only the difference that appeared in the top twenty items of a ranked list were considered in our experiment. However, we saw that there was a uh, big variations as uh, as you can probably see from from our results. It was something that uh, so there were some retrieval models that. Uh, retrieved more relevant items than others for certain queries. So there was a large difference in between the performance of different retrieval models uh, for different queries. So that's where we played and where we gained an advantage. And yeah, where all of this, what all of this is about. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question fully. Uh, I, I guess I'm more trying to figure out, um, say you have uh, like a given list and say 50% of the list is uh, determined as relevant. Um, is it going, all right, the top 50% are the ones I'm going to use, or will it say the first one, then the third one, then the fifth one, or, you know, what was the behavior you were seeing? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, actually, we, we considered all documents equally, regardless of their position. Uh, we only considered the score associated to the global, like, top 20 items in the ranked list, but the score was associated, associated to the 
whole ranked list. So the documents could appear in any position of the ranked list. The, we didn't do any selection based on the, on, the, on the position of each document in the single ranked list. It was like a more of a global, more of a rough, um, rougher uh, classification, like uh, estimate of that. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Great, any other questions from the floor or online? Okay. Can I ask a quick one as a, as a base young geek as I am? So, <laughs> yeah, since you uh, put a Gaussian distribution and then uh, also a binomial distribution, did you use a prior distribution? So, did you start from a like a flat Gaussian from the weights and from any? So, did you use any prior distribution on those uh, yeah. weights? Yeah, that's interesting. So um, the Gaussian prior that we picked was the most popular choice, which was very uh, easy to optimize. So our choice in that regard was led only um, by uh, optimization uh, easiness, mm -hmm. I'd say. Well, on the other hand, the, the choice of the loss function only came because of the way we, were, we wanted to model the problem. So by now, distributions were like the thing, the distribution that was uh, reflecting the, the best, the, the operation of um, number of successful attempts of sampling operations uh, from a ranked list. And uh, it was the closest uh, distribution that for us explained the, the proportion of relevant items uh, in a ranked list that we wanted to estimate. So it, we, we didn't really experiment uh, with different priors mm -hmm. on the model also, yeah, for optimization issues. Uh, we experimented with different distributions in the end for the optimization of the model, but the binomial made more sense in the end. And so we, we stuck with that. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, so thank you for your presentation. So I, I don't really understand how this Bayesian uh, neural networks work. So what? So you have this input and then you, you the, 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 the weights are these uh, Gaussian distributions. But what then do you calculate the likelihood or? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a, that's a great question. Yes, I didn't go into detail on purpose because there's a, a ton of yeah. So that. so I don't know if you have time. Yet. No, but sure. Like I can give you more of an intuition. Actually, yeah. You you uh, first like during training and sampling, as I said, you sample a set of weights for the model, and uh, you perform like training and compute the gradients on these uh, on this sample set of weights. Mm -hmm. So. In this way, like during inference, at least it's very similar to, to a traditional neural network. So only you have to compute the inference multiple times. During training, you have to change your loss function a little bit and introduce some, yeah, some probability related um, functions to optimize. It's called the expected lower bound, or the, the function, the exact function that you are going to optimize in the end. So you basically minimize the expectation of the result. Uh, but you do it uh, sampling the weights. There are different techniques to, to train models. In our case, we trained it in this way. So we sample the weights, and then in the way we formulated the loss function, uh, which is detailed in the paper, uh, we, we minimize the expected lower bound of the, of the loss. So we, we added an expectation, basically, whenever we were computing the gradients. Like, I, I know, like, uh, but yeah, we, we... I have to read up on Bayesian <laughs> neural networks, I suppose. Yeah, so yeah. It's really interesting. So you won't regret it if you, if you have a look, but <laughs> I think, yeah, it's uh, better if we stay at this uh, level. Yeah, thank, of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Great.